Hello and welcome to ProTrader Strategies Market Commentary for Tuesday, March the 22nd. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal, where I've commented on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. Please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies that you can implement into your own portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios. Therefore, what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. Having that out of the way, let's get this on. We've had quite a bit of economic data in the form of Flash PMI, which is uh, Purchasing Managers Index for the manufacturing sector. So they are inter calling up and interviewing the purchasing managers for the manufacturing sector and asking them whether or not they're ramping up their uh, buying of the raw products to convert into their finished products. So what that tells us is whether or not they foresee in the future uh, higher uh, manufacturing going forward. So having said that, here and across the pond, they pretty much came in line with expectation. France being the only one that came in below 50, which shows contraction in the economy. The rest of the market showed slightly just above 50, which shows continued expansion. Rather not at a vigorous pace, but it is expansion nonetheless. Uh, like German and the rest of the European market came in higher, so did we. The one that is really surprising are these these Fed manufacturing numbers. We had Philly Fed come in higher than expected. Now we're seeing Richmond Fed manufacturing come in higher than expected at 22, was expected negative one. So that was a bit of a surprise. Uh, and we're gonna have to see going forward if those start filtering into the rest of the ISM PMI numbers uh, that these Fed manufacturing numbers aren't really highly looked at by economists. The PMI ISM numbers are more widely looked at and considered more of market movers. But you have to look at those little numbers to see if they are going to trickle into the, the overall uh, major uh, economic data points. Having said that, we got the NASDAQ forward slash NQ moving higher, as you can see, up 18 points, was just up 20 points and making new highs. Uh, but as you can see, we're seeing these volume numbers really come off quite, quite a bit and are close to lows. Usually what that says is the uh, bulls are getting a little bit tired and the bears um, you know, might end up taking over here. So we could see a bit of a pullback here with these volume numbers starting to slide off. With uh, E-mini S&Ps, they were just up testing the highs just a couple of minutes ago, up two points on the day. And as you, get, you can see, again, these numbers are starting to uh, dwindle a little bit. So uh, we'll have to see if that's a precursor to any type of sell-off going forward. Uh, as you can see here, we just really moved into uh, positive territory within the last hour. For the most part, the overall uh, market was negative. So you have to assume that when they're negative overnight into the morning, the market is pretty short and you can have that snap back higher, which is what we've seen here. Now it looks like they're getting a little tired. Volume numbers are coming off and uh, looks like we could see a bit of a pullback heading into the end of the day. On to some trades that uh, I've taken off here. This is Netflix. And we did a webinar on iron condors and iron butterflies. This particular trade came from the iron butterfly uh, webinar, where I'm always asking participants in the webinar, you know, what do you see out there? What would you like me to look at during this webinar? Something that you really like to trade, and I'll see if it fits around my uh, parameters for this particular strategy. Somebody who came up with Netflix. Uh, I enter, uh, entered a couple of other ones that I had to come up with before, but this one ended up being a really good one. I didn't have it on my radar at the time. And as you can see, with an iron condor or an iron butterfly, you really would like to see this start to trend sideways. And that happened for us. And on top of it, we did get the volatility contraction you're looking for for that type of strategy. 
We're selling that strategy on high implied volatility market, thinking that it's going to settle down, trend sideways, and we were accommodated on all fronts there. So having said that, I put on the April 65, 95, 125 iron butterfly. So I am long the 65 puts, short the 95 puts and the 95 calls, and then long the 125 calls to define that risk. Now, since it's traded sideways, stayed very close to that 95 strike that when we implemented it, the theta and uh, volatility came out of it and accommodated us rather quickly. Usually with these iron condors and iron butterflies, it takes quite a bit of time before you start seeing that happen because we are very close to at the monies uh, with our calls and puts and those don't decay quite as quickly, but we were accommodated on this particular strategy. And I originally sold it for $14.89. I bought it back this morning for $9.01. So that trade ended up working out very ni nicely. Netflix with the ticker symbol NFLX. On to Target. This is a trade that I just recently put on this morning. And with the low implied volatility, as you can see, this is at historical low implied volatility. And that's why I started doing these earnings trade setups on the last couple of webinars that we've done. So you can check those out at protraderstrategies.com if you're looking for a way to take advantage of when volatility expands, these these calendar earning setup trades are really great for that. So you can go to protraderstrategies.com and sign up for that. But with this particular strategy, it just looked like this massive rally that we've had in Target, it, the overall market starts to look like it's waning a little bit. And I'm hoping to see a bit of a pullback in here, maybe down to this 80 strike where it, it, it looks like it's going to find support. So this 80 strike has showed support and resistance several times, and I'm hoping to see it come back down and test that. So I did the May 80 puts, and I paid $2.06 for that. So if I can get that pullback um, and touch down on that 80 strike, I'm going to be looking to cover that one. So that's target, ticker symbol, TGT. On to... Uh, SPY. SPY, this trade has been a thorn in my side, but I'm, I'm staying uh, aggressive with it, if you will, and I'm continuing to roll this out and trying to collect some, some extrinsic value, which is the premium of this that is going to decay. And I've done it several times. Now I've ha had on the April one weeklies, and I rolled that out to the April four weeklies. So I bought the 197s that I was short and I've sold the April 197 calls and collected another 79 cents for that. So what I'm doing is I'm lowering my cost basis, keeping that dream alive. We see any type of pullback anywhere close to that 197 area, that trade will be uh, quite profitable because of all of those credits that I've collected along the way. So that's what I'm looking for for that trade. We'll have to see if we get a bit of a pullback coming up, uh, which is what I'm looking for. Like I said, the overall economies aren't doing that well. And I'm hoping that we will get a little bit of a, a parive in this rally. Uh, I thought we were going to bounce a little bit, but this, this rally seems to be a little bit long in the tooth in my eyes. So we'll have to see how that works out. Friday's webinar, we're going to be talking about doing a straddle that would be appropriate, selling a straddle that would be appropriate for an IRA. And how do you do that when you're, shape, you're naked short a put and a call? The co naked call is what makes that not really appropriate for an IRA. But what we're going to do is we're going to define our risk on the call side and we're going to make it so that we have no risk to the upside by the way that we uh, build this strategy out. So you can go to protraderstrategies.com, sign up for that, and we'll talk about all the rules in depth, how to set this strategy up so that it is appropriate for an IRA and for any type of trader that's worried about the risk to the upside. And we can define that and make it so that there is no risk to that upside and uh, collect a bit of a credit for that. So go to protraderstrategies.com, sign up for that, I love 
all the participation that we've been seeing in these webinars. So let's keep that up and keep it going because it makes it a lot more exciting for everybody rather than just listening to me every day. All right. If you can't take that, take it easy.